Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to make toy arrows. And I may have went a little overboard with mine. But I have to admit, Hawkeye's trick arrows are a lot of fun to create. In this video I will show you how to make regular arrows and then we'll move on to some of these trick arrows. The measurements in this video will be for 1 12th scale for 6 inch action figures. But you can adjust the measurements to fit other toy lines. The materials you will need for this project are paperboard, such as from a cereal box, long wooden toothpicks or regular sized toothpicks, paper, Mod Podge, which I will be using as both a glue and a sealer, your choice of colors of acrylic craft paint, paint brushes. I like to use really small ones for the details that are called spotters and size 10 over 0, pencil, ruler or T-square, scissors, and I also like to use an outside pruner to trim the wood, but you can use your scissors if you don't have one. The first thing we need to do is get our scale down correctly. Now I'm no expert on bows and arrows. I fired a bow for maybe 15 minutes at a school camp once, and I have a Nerf bow, but I'm pretty sure those don't count. So instead, my oh so very scientific research from Wikipedia tells me that modern arrows are a length between 75 and 96 centimeters long. When we scale that down, we know our arrows should be somewhere between 6.3 centimeters long and 8 centimeters long. Here's how the two different extremes of arrow lengths look with Hawkeye. Um, Hawkeyes? If you haven't watched my video on how to make a bow, you may want to check that out first and make your bow before you move on to the arrows. That way you could better tell what length of arrows look best knocked in your bow when it is drawn. Ideally, you want the tip or head of the arrow to remain past the edge of the bow, otherwise the archer is in danger of shooting themselves in the hand. Apparently that can happen if the arrow is too short. Ew! Now you're ready to measure your arrows. Start by trimming off one of the pointy ends of your toothpick, right where it begins to narrow down. Then measure the length of your arrow using a ruler or T-square. I'm going to make this one 8 centimeters long. It is easiest to make longer arrows if you can find long toothpicks. I found mine at Walmart and they were not in the paper plate aisle with the rest of the toothpicks or with the party supplies. They were in an aisle with the pots and pans. That's Walmart logic for you. If you have the regular size of toothpicks and you want to make a longer arrow, just cut two toothpicks to half the length you want. Then cut a piece of paper that is half a centimeter wide and one centimeter long. Glue the ends of the toothpick together and then coat the paper with a layer of glue. Tightly wrap the paper around where the two toothpicks join. Let that dry and cover it again with another layer of glue on the outside of the paper. This will create an arrow with a band in the middle that you can later paint. Just keep in mind that this type of arrow will not be as strong as the ones made from a single piece of wood. Next, we're going to make an arrowhead from ordinary paper. Fold your paper in half and draw a triangle on it. We're folding the paper so that both sides of our arrowhead will be the same size. I made various sizes of triangles for my arrowheads, but the one I like best is 6 millimeters long by 6 millimeters tall. Cut along the fold to separate your two triangles. Apply some glue to the tip of your arrow's shaft. Apply a layer of glue to both sides of the triangle. Line the triangles up on the edge of the arrow's shaft and press your fingers together to bend the triangles a little bit to touch each other and to seal the edges of the triangles. If you go too small of an arrowhead, it makes it hard to secure the sides. You could always go bigger though and trim the arrowhead down if you desire. Let the arrowhead dry and then apply another layer of Mod Podge over the arrowhead to strengthen it. Now we're ready to make the feathered end of the arrow called the fletching. Now my research, which was a step above the Wikipedia search, indicates that modern arrows have a large variety of shapes of fletchings that have different effects on the arrows. I will include a link to a site in the video description that has pictures of different modern fletching shapes that you can use for reference art when you decide what you want to make. The easiest type of fletching would probably be a triangle shape, but you could sketch whatever design you want. I'm using my paperboard cereal box to make my fletching since it's a little more sturdy than regular paper and we don't need to bend it around the arrow shaft 
like we did with the arrowheads. I'm going to make my fletching one centimeter long and the height varies but usually it's around half a centimeter. You want to draw three fletchings per arrow. Cut out the fletching design. Apply a glue to the end of your arrow. You will want to leave a little space at the tip of the arrow because the fletching doesn't go all the way to the end on real arrows. Space your fletching evenly along the shaft of the arrow. Let the glue dry and then coat the fletching and the end of the arrow with another coat of Mod Podge to strengthen the bond. So that's the basic arrow design, but Hawkeye has a bunch of tricks up his sleeves, or in his quiver. So let's try to make some trick arrows. Now you can either shape the trick arrow tips out of clay, or if you're like me and don't feel like getting out a tiny amount of clay for this project, you can just use some paper. First, I'm making some measurements on my paper to make a variety of sizes of paper strips from between 5 millimeters for a tear gas arrow to 2 millimeters wide for the bola arrow. As for the length of the strip, well, we'll just make them as long as your paper is and we'll trim them later. I'm going to start with a tear gas arrow. Apply a little glue to the end of your arrow and attach one end of the paper. Roll the arrow in the paper and apply a little glue to the paper strip now and then. Keep rolling until you have the thickness of paper that looks good to you. Trim off the remaining strip of paper. Coat the paper with a layer of Mod Podge and let it dry. You can make different types of trick arrows by altering the thickness of the paper and how much paper you roll on. For the bullet arrow, I rolled on three 2mm wide strips of paper and left a little space in between each one. Now we're ready to paint our arrows. Just remember that before you paint, you want to make sure there's a layer of Mod Podge dry on the arrowheads and fletchings. Use your choice of colors of craft paint. I can already tell that this is going to take me several coats of paint, but that's fine. It's better to apply thin coats than to glob on the paint. You could paint the shafts of the arrow too if you wanted to. After the arrows are painted, apply another layer of Mod Podge to all of the painted areas to protect your paint from chipping. I ended up making a variety of regular arrows and several trick arrows including explosive arrow, rocket arrow, electro arrow, tear gas arrow, sonic arrow, bullet arrow, and a net arrow. And then, just for fun, I made up some trick arrows. This one is a pointy arrow. And this one, I'm just going to call a shark arrow because the fletching reminds me of a shark stylized fin. I'm not exactly sure what a shark arrow would do though, but if you have any ideas, you can let me know in the comments below. In the future, we're going to be making some quivers to hold all of these arrows. And before we go, I have some photos to share from viewers utilizing some of my previous projects. This first photo is by Julian, and he made a bow from my crafting video last week. That was very fast work, and it looks like it turned out nicely. The next photos are from a fellow YouTuber named Spider Chief. Spider Chief made a chair for his spider carnage, and also a bed. Spidey looks very cute tucked in for the night. If you'd like to make some fun furniture for your action figures, check out my toy crafting playlist for instructions. And if you've tried any of my projects, I'd love to see your pictures too. Just send me a link to your photos or send them to me on a social networking site. And that's all the toy fun for today. Feel free to check out some of my other videos for more crafts and reviews, and you could always subscribe if you'd like to stay updated. Thanks for watching.